Hello and welcome to the Elevate You Show. I'm your host, Tamira Wilson, and I'm so excited you're here with me today. In this show, we talk all about entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, creativepreneurs, serialpreneurs, and we talk about elevating your business, your mindset, your skill set, your spirit, your income, your health, your overall lifestyle. Today, I want to talk to you about five things you can do in your spare time to become a successful entrepreneur. Now, what I wanna share with you are things that I personally use in my life that has allowed me to stay on top of my game. The first thing is, is three in one. It has to do with nourishing your mind, body, and spirit. So the first thing is to develop a happy kickstart morning. So you're probably wondering, what in the world is a happy kickstart morning? Well, it's something for, for me, what I do is when I wake up, I wake up with a heart of gratitude. I just thank God for allowing me to see another day, allowing me to be in the land of the living, and allowing me another opportunity to be better than I was yesterday. Allow me to be more, see more, give more, receive more, love more, forgive more. And I also have a grateful heart for my friends and family who are still with me because as you know, we talk to people, we scroll down our news feeds on social media and we see people that we know that has lost a loved one. We may have lost someone that we love. So I'm grateful that I still have my friends and family with me. I thank God for my health, and my strength. Well, after I do that, then I roll over on my nightstand. I picked up my, my water bottle. That's on my nightstand that I prepared the night before. It's cool, you know, it, it keeps it my water cool. So the reason I drink water in the morning because water has many benefits of drinking it first thing in the morning. But I'm only gonna talk about two real quick. One, it hydrates your body. It gets you going throughout the day. It also releases toxins out of your body, and which is important. And when you release toxins out of your body, you know, your skin, you have beautiful skin. I mean, my, my skin used to be horrible when I was younger, a lot younger. I mean, just horrible. So I think water has something to do with clearing up. And uh, I don't know, as I age, my skin just got better. So after I do that, I do something to nourish and feed my spirit. And what do I do? I have my time and devotion, my devotional time, you know, cultivating and nourishing my relationship with God. And I spend time reading scriptures and studying scriptures. And I mean, I have every translation you can think of. I have the original Hebrew language, which is like, reading a foreign language, but I like it because I like the challenge. And <laughs> I have the King James and NIV. I have my Bible dictionary. I have a concordance. I really take time to study and I learn something all the time. And what helps me to stay on point is I have a calendar and it's mapped out for daily reading. So by the time the end of the year comes around, I've read the entire Bible throughout the year. So Every year I read this and I get something out of it every single year, you know? So, especially the Hebrew, it, that's a whole nother topic right there, you know, because back then they didn't even have the letter J in the alphabet. So imagine that, <laughs> reading that and, and reading our traditional Bible, that's a whole nother level. But so after I speak, uh, after I feed my spirit, then I try to nourish my body. And how I do that is by exercising. Exercising is very important. It, um, I either do yoga or I do cardio or some type of weight training or resistance training. And I may do both. I may do yoga in the morning and maybe some cardio later in the day, afternoon or evening, depending on how my schedule is. And if you think about it, you know, when you're sleeping, you are in a state of rest. So when you wake up, your body is still eh, kind of stiff. So you got to kind of like wake it up a little bit. And yoga is a perfect exercise for it. 
And it's funny because God shares uh, things with me through nature, observing nature. And I have four dogs, four chihuahuas. And if you ever paid attention to dogs, the first thing that they do, as soon as they wake up, they do a big old stretch. They put their front paws down and lift their little honey, their back up in the air real high, arched up. That's that's where I believe they got the term in yoga called the downward dog pose <laughs> from observing dogs. But anyway, after I feed my spirit, then I feed my mind. So what do I do? How do I do that? I read. I either, and I try to read a book, one to three books a, a month. And um, that's essential. I know a lot of people don't like reading, but they have Audible now. If you don't like to read, just listen to it. But a lot of people don't even take the time to listen to a book. <laughs> you can learn so much by reading. It's just crazy. And if I don't read, then I listen to a podcast. I may do both sometimes. You know, if I'm really hungry, my brain is like really hungry and I have to feed it, then I may listen to both. Read or listen to podcasts on different things that I'm involved in. Or I may even invest in, well, I do. I invest in courses for my personal development to learn a new skill or to master an existing skill that I have. I mean, as a marketing expert, I have to stay on top of all the latest marketing data that's out there on content marketing, video marketing, social media marketing, you name it. I have to learn it. I have to stay on top of it. And so those that's number one. So after I do all that, then number two is tapping into your hobby. I think it's critical to have a hobby because a hobby is good for an outlet. It helps you to de-stress and it just gives you a creative outlet. Now for me, I dance. For those of you, you know, some of you don't know me, but for those of you who do know that I dance, I do dance ministry, so it's not technically a hobby. However, naturally, I love to dance. I don't care what kind of music it is. You can put some music on and I can dance and maybe even choreograph an entire routine from listening to classical, jazz, Middle Eastern, hip hop, spiritual, you name it, I'll dance to it. <laughs> but dancing is my creative outlet. Also, mountain bike ride, and I love mountain bike ride. And my husband and I, we go on on nature trails, and it's so nice being off the road and just and so serene to ride past some uh, water and rivers and things like that. And being surrounded by nature is just so peaceful. And the third thing is to spend time with friends and family. There's nothing like taking time away from all the work because as entrepreneurs, it's like, whoo, I got to get away from this work because you're multitasking sometimes and you're doing mostly everything in your business until you start outsourcing. Uh, so you have all these responsibilities and it's nice to just get away from it all and spend time with the people that you truly love and who truly loves you. And I'm not talking about the fake friends and family that pretend they love you and not looking out for your good and not being in your corner and, you know, bring your spirits down. Uh, you know, you know, the people I'm talking about, <laughs> just people that drain your energy and that maybe only call you when they want something and things of that nurture, that nature. You just want to surround yourself with positive, uplifting people, people, that you're in their corner as well and you got their back, they got your back. And, you know, people that not trying to be drama all the time. You know, I, I try to stay away from drama kings and drama queens. I, I, I do. So friends and family are good to spend time with those who truly love you and who truly, you know, you love them as well. The fourth thing is to embrace your time and solitude. Having your me time is so important. It's so important to have time and solitude. So it's okay to say no to your friends and family sometimes when you want your me time. 
you know when you need your me time. You know. I know I do. It's like I, I gotta get out the house or go to the park or somewhere out of my element to just have my me time because having that time alone, that time to just be in a state of stillness, mindfulness, thinking about things. Well, really not thinking about things, but just sitting in a place of stillness because new thoughts arise, new creative ideas start flowing and it's just very beneficial. So it's okay to say no without the guilt. Say it, say it, say no, 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 not today. Not today. I have something very important to do. You got to schedule that time in for your me time or else you won't get it in. Schedule it on your calendar just like any other important thing that you need to get done. That That is on a priority list. And the last thing is, the fifth thing is service. It's important to do some type of service because as entrepreneurs, we get frustrated a lot of times. I know I do. You know. Um, and sometimes taking our mind off of our own problems and our own issues that we're going through, the only way to do that is to be in a space of serving others. You know, maybe going out to serve in a community. Now for me, I dance. You, I already said I dance. So what I do is I go to local nursing homes and, and I dance. I do dance ministry and I just love it. There's just something about seeing the spirits of the elder, elderly, their whole demeanor, the whole energy is just uplifted. You know, I see people in wheelchairs and it's, it's just a beautiful thing to be able to witness how excited they get, how their spirits just uplifts when I dance, how God uses me through dance. And um, so things like that. And I don't know what it is that you like to do, but um, as far as service, whatever your passion is, whatever floats your boat, you know, maybe you love animals. You can volunteer your time and serve in a dog shelter, or maybe you love kids. Maybe you can volunteer as a big brother or a big sister to someone who doesn't have a big brother or a big sister. <clears throat> and whatever it is, or in a hospital, you know, maybe your thing is for patients, I don't know, or the elderly, you can, you can do a lot. So just think about that. And I want to close with saying that everything that I shared with you, that's just a small list of the things that I do. Um, but that's my main decor of it. And, uh, you know, I do journaling and stuff like that as well. Um, <clears throat> time of reflection and all that. But you don't have to do necessarily everything that I do, find your, your happy kickstart morning, whatever floats your boat. But remember, the key thing is to nourish your mind, body, and spirit. And the purpose of all that is to really to develop discipline. And I want to leave with a quote by Will Smith. He said, self-discipline is the center of all material success. I like that quote. So on that note, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Come back next week because we're going to talk about how to make you stick to a habit. And it ties so well with what we're talking about now. You know, try to develop those habits. Come back next week, okay? So thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And until next time, remember to elevate you and celebrate you because guess what? Sometimes no one else will. So celebrate you, elevate you. Why? Because you're worth it. Until next time, I'll see you then. God bless. Thank you.